Hi, welcome back everyone to the Drawing Database, Professor Mark Leone. And today we're going to spend 15 minutes with the drawings of American artist John Singer Sargent, who uh, was born in 1856 in Florence, Italy, and then died in uh, London in 1925, but he is American. And so one of our most more celebrated American artists of the 19th and the early quarter of the uh, 20th century. So he, he saw quite a bit of war, um, European, but as well as uh, American Civil War and uh, the First uh, World War II as well. But I digress on that. Let's take a look at the beautiful painterly approach to sketching and drawing by Sargent. Here we have a young male, typical in this time of uh, uh, drawing, with American kind of realist, and you get this uh, very lovely uh, uh, shorthanded drawing, meaning that it's a quick sketch in charcoal, charcoal uh, stick, and then you can see in the chest area here it's stumped a little bit, blended a little bit, in these beautiful little controlled, um, very intelligently placed lines for movement, but also the rib cage, the deltoid shoulder a little bit, and the clavicle. In a very strong light source coming from the top right, sort of in front a little bit, but top. And of course he pushes his chest over. And we get these this lovely silhouetting of little male mustache, chin, and, and, and uh, deltoid, etc. A lovely quicker sketch, but very, very erudite, very controlled gesture of the fingers and with the knuckles there. A lovely, lovely study by Sargent. You'll see more of this. Sargent was well, well known as a portraitist, especially in drawing, uh, in circles within his, within his circle uh, of, of uh, the bourgeois of American society, or well-heeled, if you will, American society. It was quite well known that the citizens would would certainly compare their their portraits and and ask how how uh, I think quote unquote how how do how do you like your sergeant how do you like your portrait so these were sittings probably a day or half a day and you get these just beautiful sketches of Americans in their supposed uh, want and elegance but look at the range of lovely painterly marks we get charcoal that's blended with a stump or a hand a little bit. These beautiful strokes. Look how he comes back and finishes off the hat delicately, but a very uh, loose and controlled. Reminds me of Degas a little bit and, and Adolf Menzel. And then you get this beautiful line, the soft touches of charcoal, additive and also subtractive within the marks of the beautiful structure of the, uh, the nose, the eye. Um, these lovely areas of lighter charcoal where you go back. It, it just has a nat natural, lovely light feeling to it with the light source coming from slightly the top down, which you'll see that quite a bit in his work. Um, and then getting the, the jacket with the coat and the beautiful charcoal that's blended a little bit, then he comes back on with a little finishing charcoal in almost effortless, but quite a bit of uh, wonderful learning and execution that went into this portrait. Here we see uh, comparable to Ongra, horse and rider, right? We've seen that but a little bit different, looser approach. Ongro is a neoclassicist, and we can categorize then as a um, Edwardian sort of uh, uh, realist, if you will, of portrait painter. But he also did scenes of, of action as well. And we get this, we get this lovely economical contour line technique, but it's a, it's a floating gesture, isn't it, with the doubling up of some of the, the darker lines for the scapula and a little bit of the spine in the outer in the outer side. Lovely turn of the head. This is a beautiful pose. Lovely. Look at the structure of that head as it, as it turns, turns down back of the head and through here. Lovely turn, the contrapposto. A lovely glute, really stressed there. And of course the horse with this beautiful sort of contour and the gesture of the, the tail, the mane, uh, or the tail there. It's really quite, quite lovely by, by Sargent all in charcoal and all from life. We see this male model. There was an article written about a year ago I caught, I saw, I believe it was in the Times or the Washington Post, I can't remember which, but there, this, this particular African-American model would, would uh, be 
prominent in many of Sargent's uh, uh, drawings. And so it was kind of like an intimate partner or muse. I don't know if there was a relationship there or not, but we do know that, that there was an intimate kind of at least drawing connection. You get to see Sargent's uh, reduced style uh, here. The now, but Besides the beautiful gesture that we see, of course, right? But what we see is kind of a, uh, a shorthand approach to value. We have two or three values, all in charcoal, a little bit blended. So if you do like blending, this is a great artist to look at. But he controls it well. It's not just blended. It's drawn back in, as we can see, core shadows, right? within the structure of the knee, uh, uh, tendons here, etc., coming down. But he gives you, doesn't, he, he gives you this wonderful kind of sort of uh, hard-edged uh, kind of uh, outline with the whole thing. And so he keeps the gesture in his mind, but then he starts to render on the outside a little bit, but keeps it fresh and loose. We see the tendons here of the tibialis anterior, really lovely, and he comes down a little bit, bulges through. So it's a very kind of lovely direct, almost painterly kind of process. Also, look how he controls the feet, and he did, we don't get a lot of detail. We don't need a lot of detail for now. It's really not the main thing unless he's doing a foot, a foot study. But we get this lovely, uh, quick kind of line in through there, and all in charcoal and from, from life. Here's an exquisite example of Sargent's portrait mastery with charcoal, this beautiful kind of a more expensive paper that we see. We can see these striations that come through. It's still made today that are wonderful for charcoal. So there was, uh, I'm assuming, a quick sketch lay-in like we've seen earlier. And then there's a blocking in of value. And then there's an additive subtractive component that we see certainly in the head. Mostly additive in the face except for probably the highlights and some some erasing out for some nose and bone structure to kind of uh, what I would assume to tighten things up, but mostly an additive head. Additive subtractive, look, look at the lovely curvature of the hair. He gets just enough rhythm to move the hair around without making it too fussy. The lovely choker through here. Most of this is additive drawing and then a few subtractive marks to erase out probably bigger areas. And then the glossy sort of um, quick painterly, if you will, marks. And I love the some of the blended charcoal he gets and then the regular uh, stick and then some of the expressive marks in here. Really study backgrounds. Look a lot. Separate them from the head and really enjoy looking at all of this material on its own. It really ushers in a very painterly approach that we would see become abstract expressionism in about um, 20 more years. So he was really at the end of kind of, uh, you know, when he was alive, Impressionism, Post-Impressionism, in the beginnings of surrealism were about to, well, not quite, but almost there, certainly around Dada. And uh, it looks like he rejected those movements and stayed with an American sort of Edwardian uh, luxury era for the bourgeois of, of mostly portraiture. Here we have just a phenomenal group of hand studies in charcoal. And just notice the, the almost effort, effortless approach to gesture. This takes a lot of learning. And so if you're just learning to draw, draw from these, but draw the structure, draw the volumetric figure, okay? And, and learn to etch that into your mind so that when you're ready to add more of a style, look how boxy he makes them, even though I'm making mine more severe. But that's the idea, is to begin to learn this craft of drawing so well that Later, when you become a master, and let's see, assume you will, right? You can simplify. Look at the beautiful gesture line, quick line, uh, stump tone, lays down a stump, blends it a little bit, and adds the darker bits, and it's very painterly, but very accurate, isn't it? It's very lovely. You know, compare his work to the work of Kata Kolwitz, the German artist who was uh, about the uh, impoverished poor. So different, different styles, but both, both beautiful and uh, both having a strong sensibility within uh, charcoal. Another portrait here, Lady Helen, I believe. I'm not sure who that is. I just see the title. And, and if you can imagine for a moment, if we take out her head, look at the lovely just abstraction, the gestural effect of an impressionistic kind of realism that's certainly taken home. So her certainly had to be aware of Degas and the Impressionist Monet, 
but in, in Mane. And look at the idea of beautiful drawing and an economy of means, letting the mark do the work for you. The light source is coming from the top slightly to the left because we see the cheek structure, the, the shadows here on the, on the right. Correct? Let me get this off so we can see that cleanly. And then just this beautiful passage of charcoal stick in smaller uh, chunks and larger chunks, these big, beautiful, dark uh, uh, marks and the white marks here. Just lovely, the additive, subtractive quality of that. So this is a great example of getting both of that into your drawing, your drawing practice. Another lovely portrait. We see the same kind of an idea, a little bit more controlled. Could be earlier, I don't know for sure, uh, but lovely, study nonetheless. So these, these were models that were commissioned and they would commission sergeant and they would sit for sergeant in their, their clothing and their apparatus and, and all of the entrapments of the bourgeois and the luxury they had to um, pick really one of America's leading artists. They were lucky if they had access to him to get their portrait taken. This would, this would be probably around the time of photography, if not a little bit before, but certainly was competitive. Um, and they certainly was, uh, they were mortalized, certainly with Sargent's great charcoal uh, work, additive subtractive. Again, some of my favorites is the effortless quality of this Beautiful young man, top of the head here coming down. Look at the beautiful, this, you know, drawings like this give us his thinking. Look how he's simplifying that nose, the top of the nose into a box-like structure and just a side plane, right, into a boxy form. And of course the forehead comes across it like that and we get a little bit of the mouth, you know, coming over and a little bit of the cheek right in through to tell us that. But it tells us his thinking, and then what's really important here was the study of the shoulder and the hand um, to get whatever he needed here in through, and just the lovely effortless quality of, here we have the clavicle right in through here coming up and over, right? And then we have the scapula in through here coming over and down, down and around, like curving right, running through there. And then really the, the muscles of the deltoid across here, the, the um, the lateral and the posterior in through here, and then of course the teres major and minor up in through here, and uh, the rest of the anatomy tricep. Beautiful little line for the bicep. See how that bulges in through lovely quality there. And then we know where the light source is coming from because he holds it uh, lovely in that it's over here, right, shining down on the model. We get the core shadows in through here. So not much stumping in through here, but definitely charcoal. Notice this big, chunky, beautiful line to really give us the turn the model. Understanding the uh, extensors here coming over, this line turning over through here, the egg forming through here that he simplifies over, and this beautiful thumb in through here that he gets this box turning, the, the uh, digit over, here's the bone, the ending part of the bone, to the uh, thenar or the, the uh, palm. And then look at this beautiful turn of the thumb here, graceful, it gets overlapped. There's where the nail would be if he wanted to put that in about right there. And he gets that graceful part. And of course, then we come over to the other, other side. You know, he's drawing the structure without drawing the structure. That's why we take great pains to teach it and learn it so that you either ingest it, envelop it, and you draw without it if you want later on. Beautiful young man portrait here. I'm not going to blow it up because it's a little it's a little pixelated if I do that, but just beautiful structural control, really straight on, dominant shot, staring at the uh, individual or the viewer a little bit, beautiful. This could be, it's probably in charcoal, but it, it looks like it might be in graphite just by the, the, the quality that I see there, the reason he didn't get too dark maybe in through here, but none of this lovely, great structure in through here, look at the nose, really great structure. We can really see, see how the side paint plane slopes down and we have the, uh, this, uh, cartilage here in the front and then everything comes down to a plane so he's really got this boxed off and this in here and everything comes down right to the to the mouth and through their lovely lovely quality with the lips a very economical just a lovely study overall and then lastly a little, little different approach uh, less uh, uh, stump and realize a little bit more linear with some 
uh, stroking line. It feels a little bit more like a Renaissance era drawing to me. And we have this beautiful control of the charcoal, very quick sketch with strong lighting coming from the top right. And of course, we see her shadow shape here and a little bit of opening for the nose and then back to form shadow and then cast shadow through throughout and through here. Love the little reach for the eye. Might have been an early whistler, I'm not sure. But I did want to show this one too, just a very simple approach without the stump. And you can decide if what style you like and want to use further. All right, hope you enjoyed it. John Singer Sargent, take care. Bye-bye.